Hey guys, welcome again. I'm here to tell you about stock exchanges and an uh, important topic in stock exchanges which the media covers regularly that would be about stock indices or just we'll call them as indices. So let's get started and see what this is all about. Now firstly, let's understand what is a stock index. Okay, a stock index is based on a statistical compilation of share prices of a number of representative stocks. Okay, two of the most famous stock indices in India are Sensex and Nifty. Okay, Sensex is considered to be the benchmark index of Bombay Stock Exchange. Nifty is considered to be the benchmark index of National Stock Exchange. Okay. Now, Sensex comprises of 30 stocks, while Nifty comprises of 50 stocks. Okay. Now, why even bother having a stock index? Okay. So, what's the purpose of having an index, in fact? Now, a stock index is just one of the many other indices that you would come across when you study economics. Okay. If you are a student of economics, you may have come across indices such as consumer pricing index, wholesale price index and human development index and many more. Okay. In each of those indices, you measure something or the other. Okay. For example, in case of consumer pricing index or CPI, you go about measuring the changes in price. Now, upon arrival of that value, you are able to understand what is the approximate inflation rate in the country. Inflation refers to the rise in prices of goods, but the fall in value of money. Okay. A stock index, however, focuses on companies and their performance. Now, in general, if Sensex is doing well, as in if more and more points are being added to Sensex, it means that companies in this country and globally, you could say, are in fact doing quite well. Okay. For example, if you consider one of the stocks that are there in Sensex, let's consider a company like, for example, ICICI Bank. Okay. Now, ICICI Bank will post good profits this year. I'm just saying. Okay. Let's assume they go about posting good profits this year and they give out the reasons why they are able to get good profits. One of the reasons could be that the number of bad debts have been reduced considerably. Why have the number of bad debts been reduced considerably? It's because people have been paying their loans properly. Okay, when people have been paying their loans properly, it means that they are able to earn well. And how are they able to earn well? Because the companies they're working for or the jobs that they're doing is paying them well. And you can see how the link is actually created. I am able to pay off a loan quickly and not default on it because my employer is paying me properly. How is he able to pay me properly? Because the industry which he is part of is actually doing well. So it's in fact a cycle of events that you can see, an interlink of systems that you can see that influences the stock index. I can never really say that this is just one or two reasons what influences a stock exchange. In fact, for, for example, when the Fukushima disaster happened in Japan, that is after the tsunami, there were fears of another nuclear hazard that could come across just like Chernobyl. And people feared Japan could in fact be wiped out because of this nuclear problem. And therefore the stock indices in India fell because of that. So you can see something which is happening several thousand kilometers away could still influence the stock exchanges in India, the stock indices in India. So it's not just one or two parameters, the number of variables that affect the stock indices are in fact very vast. But to mention and to uh, examine this in a very precise manner, I can just say it's the performance of companies that influence the stock index. Better the companies are performing for whatever the many reasons are, then the stock index does well. That's one of the reasons why you see the media publish regularly saying that, okay, this uh, day Sensex went up by 300 points, Nifty went up by about 200 points, Nifty is very, very close to 6,000 levels, Sensex has breached the 20,000 level, all that. 
So in fact, an index is used to measure the companies and their performance. Okay. Now, why do you have 30 stocks in Sensex and why do you have 50 stocks in Nifty? Simple statistics. Okay. And even more specifically in statistics, I could say it's because of sampling. Okay. Now, if I were to do a research, okay, I would go about evaluating my research based on the samples that I would use in order to arrive at my results. For example, let me say that I want to do a study on what students feel about the subjects of mathematics. Okay. If the sample I consider here consists of only girls, the results that I would arrive here would be different compared to a sample which would consist of guys. Now, the reason that happens because the way you go about considering a sample gives you different results and sampling study and sampling techniques itself is an entire universe altogether. In order to measure how companies are doing, you have two samples here which are taken in order to design the stock index. So in order to design Sensex, they've taken 30 companies. In order to design Nifty, they've taken about 50 companies. Okay. Now, what are the various indices that are there? We always hear about uh, Sensex and Nifty. There are many, many more other indices that you would come across. These are the less famous ones, but the volumes of trade that happened here is equally high. Okay. Now, one of the indices that you have there is BSC 100 or SNP. SNP, like I mentioned before, is standard and poor. Okay, uh, BSC 100, like the name suggests, BSC 100 comprises of 100 stocks. BSC mid cap, I told you what mid cap is, but just a reminder in case the market capitalization of a company is anywhere between 150 crores to 550 crores, you call it as a mid cap company. What is market capitalization? Another reminder again, the number of shares multiplied by the price of every share is called as market capitalization. Greater the market capitalization, the better the value the company has got. Okay. Then a BSC small cap. If the market capitalization of the companies are below 150 crores. Okay. You call them as a small cap company. And then you have BSC 200. BSE 200 comprises of a stock index that has 200 companies. Okay. Like I said, each of these indices consists of a particular sample of companies. Okay. If you look at the number of comp companies in India that are publicly traded, they exceed close more than 8,000. Now you can't consider all the 8,000 companies to, uh, in order to measure how this economy is doing and how the industries are doing. So instead, rather than measuring 8,000, you measure here like say 100, 200 or in case of Sensex, you measure only 30. Okay. Now, the other indices that are there in Bombay Stock Exchange. Now, for this video, I chose only Bombay Stock Exchange because frankly speaking, I don't like the National Stock Exchange website. It's extremely painful to gather data from that website. A BSE website I like because you just go there, you get everything right in your face kind of information they're able to deliver. For NSE, I find it a little annoying to gather data from that. So um, broad indices that you, are, that you have, I gave the example of the broad indices in the previous slide. The other types of indices that you have, BSE IPO, SME IPO, SME here stands for small and medium scale enterprises. Okay. Uh, Dolex that is Sensex, which is denominated in dollars, uh, Dolex 100, Dolex 200, and you have volatility indices. Volatility indices are specifically for futures and options. Okay. Let me confuse you here a little, particularly about an option. Okay. A call option gives the buyer the right to buy and the seller of a call option sells the right to buy in a put option. The put option holder has the right to sell while the seller of the put option sells the right to sell. I know it sounds like a nursery rhyme. Don't worry about it. I'll do a detailed video about futures and options later. Okay. And then you have thematic indices. These are the new ones. They refer particularly to the emerging markets. 
So you have indices which focus on companies that are in the emerging markets. Okay, emerging markets could be, for example, solar energy, alternative energy. All this gets categorized as a, a emerging market. And then you have sector specific indices. For each of the major sectors that are there in the country, you have one stock exchange or one stock index or the other, sorry, which measures each of them. You have FMCG, healthcare. For companies that are into healthcare, there is Apollo, Fortis. Okay, uh, all these companies are classified in the healthcare division. And then you have uh, PSUs, that is public sector undertaking, uh, government companies. Okay, those are the companies that you would see which are listed there. Okay, now, are there indices abroad? Of course, uh, some of the major indices abroad that you would find is DJIA, uh, that is Dow Jones Industrial Average, named after the very famous Charles Dow okay and edward jones dow jones industrial average and you have s p 500 s p 500 you could say is more or less like sensex for america but instead uh, rather than having 30 companies they have about 500 companies okay and ftse ftse is a united kingdom exchange united kingdom stock index sorry uh, people just call it as FTSE. Uh, Nikkei 225, that's a Japanese index. As you can see, 225 companies are listed on this index. Uh, crude oil, uh, when you talk about prices of petrol going up or down, it's really not in the liberty of the central government to increase the prices of uh, petroleum. In fact, global crude oil prices are one of the reasons why you would see an increase in your petrol costs or see a decrease in your petrol costs. Okay, once upon a time, I remember crude oil prices had even touched around $140 a barrel. Okay, 99.88 there is $99.88 per barrel. Okay, now when it comes to a barrel of stock in the barrel of uh, oil, sorry, you have around 42 gallons of crude oil that is there in one barrel. Okay, 42 gallons of crude oil that's considered to be in one barrel and there are different types of crude oil that people go about uh, trading. Uh, the ones that you see there in the bracket is WTI, West Texas Intermediate. Okay, that's one of the types of crude oil that they have. There's another type of crude oil called Brent crude oil. Um, in fact, West Texas Intermediate is also known as sweet crude oil. Okay, I'm not really sure why they would call it as sweet crude oil, but I'm really, really certain that no one has bothered to taste this and uh, name this based on the flavor of the product. Okay, so uh, you have gold as well. Gold is one of those commodities that are considered to be fungible. A fungible commodities are those wherein, no matter where you are in the world, gold is still gold. At least the value of that is relatively the same. Okay, it's not so the case when it comes to agricultural products. It's not so the case when it comes to many of the metals. Gold, on the other hand, is considered to have a universal appeal. Okay, now, there are more details that I can give you about the different stock indices in India. The next video I'll be doing is very, very particular to just Sensex alone. You will, I'll give you details as to how uh, people calculate Sensex and uh, the various uh, uh, companies that are listed in Sensex, all that. Okay, thank you for your time. I hope this video uh, gave you information as to how these different stock indices work. Okay, in the next video, I'll talk about Sensex in detail. Thank you for your time.